Hi, and welcome to this video on decrypting TLS traffic using Wireshark. Now, if you're a web app tester, you've probably spent many hours in Burpol's app watching HTTP requests and responses going back and forth between client and server. But occasionally, you need to look below the application layer and see what's going on at layer, lower layers of the stack. And that's where Wireshark comes in. Wireshark lets us see exactly what's going on on the network layer. But due to its position on the network, on its own, it's not able to look inside TLS traffic in the same way that Burp or Zap can. Reason for this is Wireshark doesn't have access to the keys used to encrypt the traffic. And so obviously it can't then decrypt the traffic. But with an easy little hack, we can get Burp or Zap to write those keys out to a file, import them into Wireshark and allow it to do the decryption. To do this, we use a little application from the Nekov uh, repo, from Nekov's repo, and it's called Extract TLS Secrets. I'll put a link to the repo down in the, uh, in the notes for this video. As it says in the description, this app allows you to decrypt connections on the fly. It extracts the shared secrets from TLS connections, logs them out to a file, which other applications, usually Wireshark, um, can then import and use to do the decryption. So to use the app, from the releases, we download the latest version. I've already got that downloaded. To use it in Burp, really simple. We're going to start up Burp using Burp's Java. That's the jar file. And what we're going to add in is this extra little bit in the middle. What this is doing is saying to load in the Java agent. It's the extract TLS secrets jar file that we've just downloaded. So make sure you point that to where you downloaded it. And then we're going to point it at a file to log those keys out to. So I'm logging it to slash temp burp keys. And that's all you need to add. If we now start burp. And we fire up Burp's browser. We'll go back to that. If we go to my site, I look in Wireshark, what we should see, lots of traffic, but none of it is visible HTTP traffic. Lots of application data, but it's all encrypted. We go back to our command line and we have a look in the temp directory we have our temp burp keys which is the one we ask the, uh, the extract secrets to write out what we're going to do with that we're going to go into wireshark edit preferences protocols all the way down to TLS, we're going to browse, temp, and we're going to point it at the burp keys file and say open on that. And why is that not opening? Just give that a try again, slash temp, burp keys. That's better, it's open at this time. If we apply that, okay. And now if we look, a lot of this has turned from normal color into green, showing we've got uh, HTTP traffic that Wireshark is then able to decrypt. And here we can see, this is one of the uh, requests, sorry, this is one of the responses from my site and there we can see the headers and we'll look a little bit lower down we've got uh, more of the data so really simple we add a little bit of filtering on here HTTP 2 we can see it in even more depth and as uh, Burp is running it's writing those keys out 
and Wireshark is then importing them on the fly. So it's not a one-off. We write the file, we import it. If we look, this is packet 244. We go back to the browser, browse across, and we can see burp update in the background. There we go, some more traffic going backwards and forwards. There's the get request. As we can see, full responses and full request is there. Responses in frame that. And there's the response. So nice and easy. We're looking at the exact traffic that's going on on the wire. And uh, reason I'm looking at this at the moment is I had a recent problem with um, application that was messing around with the HTTP headers. It was changing the case of some of the headers and that was messing up something on the server side. It was doing that transparently. So as far as I was concerned, I was putting in valid headers. The server wasn't receiving them. So by, by looking in here, I was able to look at exactly what was on the wire. And um, from that, I was able to see the fact that the, the proxy I was using for that was messing with the, uh, the headers. So that's one of the use cases. I'm sure there are plenty of others. But that's, uh, that's it running in burp. Let's restart that. If we want to do the same thing for zap. Zap's got a little startup script, at least the Linux version has, zap sh. And I'm sure there is a much better way of doing this, but all I did, if you come down to the bottom of this file, this is where Zap is actually started. And all I did is sneaked exactly the same addition into there as I did for Burp. So that's the line added to Burp, Java agent downloads the keys. Java agent download and the keys, and this time I'm writing out to Zap keys. So if we can stop that and fire up zap so if we come into zap I've got Firefox set up to root through zap and let's go back to my site again uh, we can see zap's picking it up go back into Wireshark And there we go. As we can see, there was no, no HTTP, no HTTP2 traffic. It's all encrypted. You can see the TLS handshakes going on. Go to Edit, Preferences, Protocols. Oop, TLS is there. We'll change that from burp keys to zap keys. And there we go. Magic happens again. We get packets turning to green and we can see the requests. So this time it's HTTP 1.1 rather than 1.2. But there's a request and responses in the frame. So there we go. There's the response. So nice and simple. Both burp and zap use the same jar file. Where have we gone? Come back away we don't want that we want that so it started up in burp we had that line in just on the command line as we're starting it in zap same thing i've just added it to the end of the um, sh startup script and make sure this uh, this keys file is sort of sensitive if you're testing obviously if you leak that out anybody else who's looking at the wire can uh, can decrypt your traffic so just be a bit careful with it but obviously if you're in a test environment you should know what you're doing and should uh, things should be locked down one last little thing on this if you're moving out of zap or burp and you want to look at something else like curl you can also do the same trick using curl this time it's slightly different we set an environment variable called ssl key log file and we point that again at, um, the file we want to save the keys out to. So here we're going to do a curl for my site 
uh, and we're going to log out to temp curl log. We've done that. There's the file. Go back into Burp. Uh, so back into Wireshark. All encrypted. Edit preferences. Protocol. TLS. Browse. Curl keylog. And back here again, we've got our traffic. Prove that that's there. That was 113. Curl again. And there's the request. This, uh, this trick with curl, setting the, uh, the keylog file, it's not just curl. This will work with uh, anything that's been built using libcurl. So any applications that are built on that. However, the uh, the back end has to support it. So at the moment, you're looking at things like OpenSSL, AWS LC, Boring T uh, SSL, GNU TLS, and Wolf SSL. At the moment, Libre SSL doesn't support this. So if your application is built on any of those, or it uses libcurl, you can have a go at setting this environment variable, and uh, yeah, it should work. If you want to set it on mass rather than each time you run it, you can just set it like any other uh, any other variable in your system and then run your apps as normal. So that's it. Hope you found this useful and uh, thanks very much. See you next time.